my friends, today we're talking about the popular Pokemon trainer, Nessa. Despite the new Galar region being inspired by the United Kingdom, Nessa's jewelry of choice, the waste beads, come from Africa. And that's what we're going to be discussing today. And on that note, it's created a sort of headcanon of mine in that Nessa is likely an immigrant or the daughter of immigrants. And so I would like to read to you a quote from the website tenement.org slash stories slash African waste beads. So what you're about to hear is a real life story of a woman named Patrak Amankwa. In Africa, a bead is rarely a simple ornament. These beads are worn visibly as a sign of status or hidden as an invisible yet appreciable signal to a partner. When I was younger, my mother gave me my own set of waist beads. I remember being so excited and eager to wear it because I had only seen them on the older girls. The beads had always symbolized growth and maturity. A mother would always pass it down to their daughter if she feels the daughter is ready to enter womanhood. Coming to America, almost nothing stayed the same. My whole lifestyle has been modified to fit the norms of an American society. Even at home, when I'm alone with my brother, we rarely speak our native language, and it seems like we are slowly losing touch where we came from. However, one part of me that always reminds me of my roots and always makes me feel nostalgic is my waist beads. Every time the beads rattle or when my beads show, I feel grown and mature like the old girls in Africa that I used to look up to. And I also feel proud to be African and to be part of such a rich culture. The beads colorful strands symbolize sensuality, fertility, healing and positive energy. The beads are something that every girl has to have in my country in order to pass into womanhood. So it is important that I have it on always to remind myself that I am grown and that I have to be mature, modest and chaste so my mother could be proud of me and also the upcoming girls could also look up to me. So before we move on let's first mention that it was said in that quote that these waste beads are sometimes hidden away. The Ashanti people, for example, hide away their waist beads when they wear them. The only people that get to see a woman's waist beads are other women, or a woman's lover or husband, and actually, when she wants to make love, she will rattle those waist beads so that the man can hear when she wants to make love. The other part of that quote was that some people in Africa wear the beads visibly as a sign of status. This sounds a bit more like our friend Nessa. Speaking of whom, you may be wondering, so was the Pokemon company inspired by African waist beads when they chose that as her jewelry? Chances are no, I highly doubt it. I think the way the Pokemon company works is they choose a region of the world to be uh, inspired by for their Pokemon region and they probably hire some people to learn about the local culture and then they use that within their video game but outside of that I don't think their employees really know a whole lot about the world in general you know and being that they've never done an African region before chances are the Pokemon company doesn't know a damn thing about Africa. So, yeah. The main reason why I did this video today wasn't to try to convince you that there's like a bunch of African culture within the Pokemon game. It was just, I wanted to teach you more stuff about Africa as I always do on this channel. And I found a convenient way of doing it through Nessa's art design. 
Oh, and by the way, if this is your first video of mine that you're watching, I've done another Pokemon video before, one that involves an African-style Pikachu that I designed. You should definitely check that out. And of course, I've done other Nintendo uh, videos as well, including an African Ganondorf, uh, African Ganon, I mean, and other awesome, cool stuff too. Anyway, let's talk a little bit more about African Way Speeds while I have your time. So here's some info I gleaned from an academic journal called Cultural Patterns of Contraceptive Usage Among Rural Women in Erhobo Land, Nigeria, which was written by James Erahu Ruhu Odiv Weri. So according to this scholar, some of the Yoruba of southwest Nigeria believe that waist beads can be used as birth control. They are often laced with charms and worn by women as contraception. Now, scientifically speaking, you are probably better off using a condom, but it's always fascinating to learn about traditional methods of anything, really. So I thought I'd share that with you. Anyway, moving back to our Ashanti friends in Ghana, so tied to female identity are the waist beads that even in death, the women are actually buried with their waist beads attached to them so that you can identify that that skeleton you're looking at is indeed a proud woman. But of course Africa is a vast continent with many different cultures and in some African cultures like in East Africa sometimes there are men that wear waist beads as well. For example, you can very clearly see some waist beads on this Turkana man that is on the front cover of the book called The Peoples of Kenya by Joy Adamson. Though unfortunately not every edition of the book has that on the front cover. My edition is mostly blank. It has a shield on the front with a couple of spears and that's about it. Luckily the image I just described to you is within the book itself. Alrighty, I think that'll be all for our discussion of waist beads for now. Uh, if you enjoyed today's episode, please give it a like. If you hated it, you can feel free to give it a dislike. Uh, if you're new here, please subscribe. I would appreciate that. And if you'd like to chat, certainly comment. And yeah, have a nice day.